Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good. If you missed the last video, I'll link it here. I have started with my Father's Day series and we are going miniatures and oh my gosh, I am obsessed with this mold right now. This is the Katie Sue gardening accessory mold. I got it from Amazon. I may or may not have ordered another three yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. This is actually a food safe mold. Katie Sue really works with the baking line. So most of her molds are made for cookies or decorating cakes, but where it's silicon, we can use it for resin. Once you use it for resin, do not ever use it for food. Okay, if you saw the last video, you'll recognize exactly what I'm doing. If you missed the last video, I am dusting the mold with my mica powders. Now, we are going for another gardening theme project in this video. And for this, I'm going to be using some of the terracotta pots and the watering can. I still haven't quite got around to using those wellies yet, but I'm dusting the mold with browns, golds, and greens. Really, I don't have a terracotta pot kind of color, so I'm making it up as I go. I'm now gonna fill these with the polyurethane, which is Polycraft FC3680. This is from MB Fiberglass, or I got mine from I Love Mixed Media here in the UK. Now this is black. It's automatically black. It doesn't need any colors added. There were questions about the demold time on this. The pot actually says longer than it is. I can demold this within 20 minutes of pouring. Quite honestly, you don't need to leave it as long as the pot tells you to, but of course that is at your own risk. I'm just backing these in black. Now we all know that if we are dusting our molds with mica, black is the best background it's going to make them pop now for the background of this charm I really want that green if you saw my first polyurethane video where I used the let's resin polyurethane I added some green pigment so green alcohol ink in to the white polyurethane and it gave me the most mwah, beautiful green and I knew that I wanted to do that again I really wanted this gorgeous calming green for my background and here you see me just pouring them in and then we're going to speed it up times a billion for them to cure you can see how pastelized they go and I absolutely love the color I have demolded everything from my mold and the watering can and the two pots there you'll see me I made those in the last video so I have a little collection going on here the look I was going for was this almost French very very typical what we see from the French countryside these lots of terracotta lots of greenery maybe even like Italian that Italian garden vibe that is what I was going for in this video and I had it in my head that I really wanted these topiary balls you know when you get those absolutely gorgeous little box um I think they're called box hedge I don't, don't quote me on it. And then you, you kind of trim them in a ball, a complete sphere. I absolutely love them. I love the look of them. I think they look so, so smart. So my plan was to line up a few terracotta pots and they would all have their own round-ish, <laughs> round-ish box hedge. At this point, I knew I wanted another 3D pendant. So whether this becomes a key ring or whether it becomes a fridge magnet, whatever it is you want to do, I knew I wanted 3D. Now, part of me wanted three pots just because odd numbers are better than evens when it comes to design, but I just felt like there was something not quite right. So I cut my pot down. How cute does it look? I actually just took my craft blade and sliced the bottom off. Sorry pot, but it's worth it, you know. Next up, we are using our dried moss again. This moss I bought from Baker Ross and I've soaked it in UV resin just to get it well and truly drenched. At this point, I'm just playing around. I'm trying to get 
the look I was going for, you know, the round box head. Now, easier said than done. <laughs> easier said than done. But I would recommend just going with your heart anyway and just going with the flow. There's really no rules here when it comes to what you want to put in your creations. So again, I have one layer of UV clear UV resin down on this mold. Now, if you don't have polyurethane and if you don't have UV resin, you can do this with epoxy resin. I'm just letting you know if you don't own those things and you don't really want to work with those things, you know, epoxy resin will do this as well. It's just that you just have to wait longer to cure in between layers. That is the only negative here, but this is totally doable with epoxy. This is what we are looking like so far. A bit messier than I wanted, but you know, it's handmade with love, not perfection. This could not be any easier. It is, it is definitely a paired back version of the last video that you saw where we chucked so much in. This is more of a simplistic, calming, countryside, zen kind of feel. I decided to put a couple of the white stones in. I just felt like the white would really pop. It would really give us this Mediterranean feel with the white stones as opposed to the grey. And again, I went for just three stones. So three pots, three stones to keep that odd number, that design going. And again, everything goes under my UV light for the 200 seconds. And that is it guys. That is as simple as this one got. I would love to see this in something bigger, maybe a square coaster mold that you could then transfer into a small box frame, something for the kitchen wall maybe, or even your zen bathroom. Yeah, I absolutely love the simplicity of this one. So my next plan is to work out where I wanted the upper level, the, the level that's going to be protruding out of the mold. Now, I have just stuck the watering can down and the final pot on top of the mold. So they are 3D. They are outside the perimeter of the mold just to give it that kind of 3Dness. <laughs> 3Dness, that's a word. And then I just added a little bit of greenery into that final pot to make it look like it kind of needs watering. You know, it needs to be watered. Now, here's the thing. I did decide to add some blue UV resin, but if you don't have colored UV resin, you can use your clear UV resin alongside some blue alcohol ink or some blue dye colorant. And yeah, I don't know if I should have done this, but it's okay. We know what we were going for, whether we like the results or not. That's just a lesson, isn't it? It's a lesson. But yes, so far, I'm happy I went for it because I felt like I needed to. I needed to give it a little something, something. I needed to see water coming out of my watering can. And yes, we know water isn't blue, but you know, it's the whole aesthetic I was going for. Lastly, I just gave the whole edge a trim with my craft blade. You can use your deburring tool, but quite frankly, I got a lot, a lot of spill out because I rested that last pot and that watering can right on the very surface, which just pushed all of my resin out of the mold and that's okay that's okay let me know what you think of it the one on the left is the one from the last video I adore the simplicity of the terracotta pots and those box hedges I hope you can see the vision that I had because honestly I love it I just wish I got them a little bit more round a little bit more spherical might have been able to if I spent a bit longer trying but I'm really really chuffed with these results and oh my goodness me we are going miniature again on Saturday we are making the smallest miniature queer pond on the planet on the planet <laughs> I'm putting it out there that might be a lie but I hope you have loved this one thank you so so much if you've been with me in the live chat it's not as long as yesterday's video but you can see that's because it's so much simpler I appreciate you all massively and I will see you all on Saturday. Bye.